Hello, God bless you all. Welcome to another live broadcast. It's amazing to have each and every one of you here. God bless you. And um, anywhere you're watching from, we we'll pray that the peace of the Lord rest and abide with you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. So this is a new series, um, something by, by the grace of God we're going to be doing often and it's called Minister's Table Talk. I'm going to be having my friends visit to discuss about the ministry life, their journey, revival, and you get to have um, in-depth details from the horse's mouth concerning certain things that um, you may want to know about their journeys and their service unto God. Today I'm privileged to have my very good friend, Covenant Brother. We've known each other for many, many years. It's, it's, it's an honor to serve the Lord with this man by my side. I welcome today to the studio my brother, Apostle Victor Ogbe, the captain. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, my brother. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Best sir. Prophet. Thank you. How are you doing? Very well, very well. You it look such a privilege <laughs> to be here. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. Thank you so, so much. So you just concluded um, an amazing program yeah. between this past Sunday. Yeah. An amazing program. Our father in law Apostle Aaron Masai, was around. Yeah. Um, how did the program go? How did, for those who did not attend, <laughs> how did it go? <laughs> wow. Well, for all of us, it was an amazing outing. Mm. Um, uh, the meeting exceeded our expectation. You know, oh, we got yes, a lot yes, of yes, calls. Yes, yes, a lot yes, of yes. people doubted. They felt oh, really? That he was not going to come. <laughs> <laughs> but and the amazing thing is, Daddy was the one that gave the date. He was. The oh, one. beautiful! So beautiful. I was confident that he was going to be around. And yes, and he actually came. We did the little we could, and mm. our expectation was exceeded. It was mind blowing. I was privileged to be there. It was amazing to see what God is um, doing in Kubwa there. It's, oh, yes. it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, yes. um, so I would be asking some, some questions, and um, these questions is to at least give you um, the premise with which you can enlighten us on certain topics and... Um, Teach us. I hope there are no <laughs> jump questions. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have the spirit of wisdom, so <laughs> if there are jump questions, I know you have light, as our father said, you have light to simplify hard sentences. Amen. You know, Amen. No, 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 but they are, they are going to be very, very uh, interesting questions. Amen. Um, and I believe that um, it's going to enlighten each and every one of us. And as you join us, on all our platforms, share the broadcast, invite family and friends. Let's enjoy a great time on this table talk. So, brother, um, I've known you for many years, and one thing I can say stands out in your life is your intercessory ministry. You know, as the generation evolves, you find less and less people who are interested in true travailing prayer. You know, traveling prayer has been one of the cultures, has been one of the cultures of genuine power ministry. And we've seen it in the lives of people like Babalola, John Knox, the stories we've heard. And I've known you to be a prayer man, you yeah. know. Apart from the many dimensions of your life, I, I've known you to be a prayer man. So I really, I've never asked you this question personally before, but I really want to know... Um, how did, you begin, how did you begin this journey into prayer? And um, you, if you can, can you share some encounters that bettered most of the dimensions I know is at work in you, the strong trans, the power move, the strong deliverance and healing. Can you just shed more light on that? Wow. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you, brother. Sometimes I, I think the prayer thing is... Uh, Mm. Sometimes I want to humorously now. Yes, 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 yes. I look at it like a punishment from God. <laughs> 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 you know, because um, I was not always the church boy. 
Oh, uh, yes. Okay. I have, no, I, I, I had a mm. past with the world. Though mm. my dad was an evangelist before oh, he okay. died. Oh, beautiful. Uh, and after oh, his sorry. demise, the, the Lord told me to put on his shoes, which wow. I vehemently refused. So yeah. this is like an inheritance exactly. passed on. Wow. And um, then I was actually grooming myself to be a music artist. Mm. And in this Abuja, we were oh. into music. And oh. I have trained my voice. I was just oh, trying to be okay. a, a musician. Uh, when the Lord came with that word, I, I disobeyed. I said I was 3,000 mm. kilometers far away from the call of God. The captain. <laughs> Reason being that we grew up in poverty. My dad, because of his evangelistic work in the rural area, he, mm. he resigned from his job, yes. relocated us back to the rural area, and mm. we knew suffering. So none mm -hmm. of us wanted to have anything to, to do, do with the ministry. With the ministry. That's true. So when the word of the Lord came, I, I refused vehemently because I, I wanted to make money. True. To take care of the family. Exactly. So I was in one of these gardens in Abuja one day, and after I performed, I was downstairs, Another artist was all performing, mm. and then I heard the voice. He said, you don't belong here. Wow. He said, you don't belong here. Audible. Audible. Mm. You don't belong here. And that was how it died. What happened was, it's amazing. after I left that event, I went back home. Coincidentally, my call-up later came up, and I oh, went for service. Oh, for youth service. Okay. That was where the problem started. A good problem. <laughs> a good problem. <laughs> so it was like this voice that I cherish, I've trained to sing and all mm. of that was taken and prayer was, was imparted mm. in it. Any mm. small thing, I'll start shouting. Ah, ah. That was how the voice crack and crack, crack and <laughs> hear, crack. Now the voice And the crack, crack is blessing <laughs> us now. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Yes, sir. So that was how it began. And um, at a point... I began to desire vision. I began mm. to, because I said, okay, if this is what you want me to do, then you have to empower me. That's true. So I started desiring vision. I wanted to see in the spirit. And I listened to a sermon by mm -hmm. our father, the Lord, then. Okay. And he said that, you want to see vision. Have you prayed 10 hours before? Car. That vision exists at an energy level, level. in mm. the spirit that only the traveling spirit can assess. Only so, the traveling spirit yes. can access. So wow. he said, go for 10 hours, break it to five, go with mud. <laughs> <laughs> and as a good student, I pick up Amazing. my bag, I, I went into the closet. And for the first time, I prayed nonstop for five hours. My throat was dried. Jesus. I was almost um, asking God, what kind of a wicked God are you? Mm. Why would you want me to pray this long and this hard and I can imagine. before I see a vision, you know? But something happened. While I kept at it, now I don't break. I just went straight. And mm. one day I was praying. I've gone like nine hours. Nine hours? Yes. Prayer. Memory serves me right. And on the ninth wow. hour, I saw a being entered the room where I was, mm. a giant. I could feel the fire, even as I speak right mm. now. And immediately the being entered, the whole atmosphere in the room changed. Mm. The utterance of my prayer changed. The energy changed. My God. Ba, 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 ba. I was loud like that for extra hours. Then another encounters, I will, after that prayer, I lay down, and then my eyes opened. Mm. And I saw a man of God, and he, I saw myself kneeling before him. And he, wow. he, he, I was with a bottle of oil. Uh, sorry, all this hap was happening in Calabar? Yes, wow. in Calabar, mm. while I was still in Calabar. In service, okay. I, I was done with service now. Okay, but you yes. had to remain. Yes, okay. after service, the Lord said, remain here. Mm. So I remained in Calabar, and I started traveling. Mm. I started pressing into God. So the man of God said, um, he laid hands on me and prayed and said, receive the mark of a firebrand. And mm. then it was like um, a hot iron was released and pierced my side like this. My God. So I came out of the vision with my hands mm. by my side. 
and my prayer life was never the same since then. This is amazing. This is amazing. We, we give God glory for... Wow, wow, yes. wow. And it means that this, this dimension of prayer expression did not just come by sheer human will. Mm, um, it began, you know... By you, and I come to what you say, desiring to see something that can yeah. bolster your faith because of where you're coming from. Yeah. And then an encounter now took it to another level. Yes. Okay, so um, do me this favor, you know. I'm asking as a man now. <laughs> How long do you think, um, what is the longest time you spent in prayer at a, at a go? At a go? Um individually now yes as an individual as both as an individual and maybe let's say corporately also but as an individual first as an individual i think i've gone 20 jesus christ yes <laughs> 18, 20. we have a lot of growing to do but the first time jesus. i saw an open vision i prayed non-stop for 15 hours 15 hours yes 15 hours I prayed I prayed ah it was I don't know what I was praying for mm. I was just praying in the spirit and I prayed non-stop for 15 hours I think on the 15th hour I, I saw the the heavens open and I saw mm. two giant beings mm. playing chess game one was sweating two giant being playing chess game yes one was seriously sweating trying to to and make a move the while the other one was just smiling and looking and any move, this one move, we just can't tell with just a single move. Oh, wow. So okay. I just got the interpretation, relax, God is in charge. Wow, amen. God yeah. is in charge in Yeshua's name. So we've heard it from his mouth, his prayer journey. You know, I know a lot of you know him as a praying general. And I can tell you, as someone who has been privileged to be close to this servant of God, um... I know, you know, a lot of people pray for camera. And sadly, our generation celebrates, you know, the one that is done in public. That, that, that's the easiest way to, you know, become idolized. But I, I've, I've seen you pray, you know, when no one is watching, you've actually prayed. So um, I know that as you began that journey, there might have been some strong temptations because you are just coming from the world and um, you already had your mindset on achieving something for yourself and that's why you went into music. Uh, now the Lord is calling you into ministry and you started praying. Can you tell me what area did Satan tempt you the most? You know, During those days of your disconnecting from the previous goals and life and rest, and now you're pressing into God, you're an intercessor, you're laboring in prayer. Uh, why this, this question is important is because I believe that if Satan sees the star of one who is going to affect the lives of many, there are certain things he's going to throw towards that person. And those temptations can actually be generally common to others. So that will also help help them, you know, navigate through that. So what type of peculiar, maybe one or two type of peculiar temptations the devil attacked you with and how you overcame it? You know, these things sometimes I know Satan can trouble the mind and say, oh, you are going to feel... So just, just tell us. Yeah, um, I think one of the outstanding one was the problem of unanswered prayers. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, it was so, so graphic. You know, when I started praying, we mm. were taught that God answers prayer. Oh, yes. If there's a man to pray, there's, there's a, a God, God to answer. answer. I remember answers. that slogan, yes. Exactly. So when I started praying, I started asking God for things. I started desiring things. I wanted a change. I wanted to see things turn mm. around immediately. Unknown to me, prayer, first of all, walks mm. God into you. Wow, prayer was God, God into you first. Out of you, okay. yes. So what God was interested in was a total purging of his man. But I wanted mm. the benefit of prayer. Mm. So I was mm. faced with 
the, the offense of unanswered prayer. Mm -hmm. And one day I told myself, okay, maybe I'm not praying long enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I was trusting God for something. Uh, it's very flim flimsy stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. I was, my laptop broke. Okay. So I needed money to fix it because oh. I wanted to study. I wanted to watch videos. I wanted to build myself. So I was you trusting to God, the Lord. That's the only one you know. Yes. Ah. At this point, my family were not happy already because oh. my elder ones, they felt uh, coming from exactly because of the experience the with our yes. father, they felt, uh, I, if I want to be a pastor, I should have told them instead of wasting money <laughs> to train me in school and all of that. Now I'm graduated, they feel I should get a job to support the family. I said, I mean, True. I'm pressing mm. into God. So um, it happened that as I was desiring God for certain things, it wasn't working. I turned to him, so the devil spoke to me. Mm. Say, you're wasting your time. Say, this thing, no, they work. Mm. So I told myself, I said, no, they have not prayed enough. Mm. You know? So I said, I'm going to pray nonstop. For 21 hours. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean 24 hours. And I'm sure if I tarry long enough, the Lord was going to mm. send me my request, mm. you know. So, that was just a laptop. A lap to repair a laptop. To repair a laptop and <laughs> get a phone that I can use to access the internet. <laughs> this is you know? amazing. So while I, I locked myself up, I started praying. I was praying. I prayed for like six hours. Jesus. And into the sixth, seventh hours, the, the voice of the devil came long. He said, how long will you continue to punish yourself like this? My God. Say, every day you are fasting, every day you are praying, and there's nothing to show for it. Mm. And then I heard myself concur with the devil. I said, that oh. is true. Oh. The this thing I would This is in the down. middle of prayer. In the middle of prayer, sir. Hmm. I just stopped the prayer, picked my stuff, oh. held the door knob, wanted to open the door and go out. Leave. Then the voice of the Holy Ghost came from within me. Thank you. Wow. I said, so you truly want to leave? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my that God. That was my deliverance. Oh, my so God. So you truly want to leave? So I broke down in tears. Oh, my God. And I cried, I cried, I cried. I cried, I wept there till I slept off. Oh, my God. When I woke up, it was the next day. And then immediately I came <sighs> out. Uh, you met Papa Sam yesterday. Yes, yes, yes. Amazing, he man. He was not aware of my discussion with God or what this thing I'm telling yes, you happened yes, between yes. me, the Holy Ghost, and, and the, the devil. devil. <laughs> <laughs> so... He came and told me, say, Victor, why are you angry with God? He said, God said you are offended in him. Oh. I God spoke to him. About the incident my God. that took place in my secret place. I never uttered a word to anybody. Mm. He said, God said you are angry with him. Why are you angry with God? Mm. So for the first time, it dawned on me that God was actually aware Mm. Of my needs. Of your needs. But so he was more interested in what he was achieving in me. Hallelujah. So mm. that ended offense till today. So a lot of times God is actually aware of our needs. Mm -hmm. But if it seems as though it tarries, he's more interested at that moment in what he's walking Walk, into you walking into with us. those exercises. Exactly. Wow, this is amazing. And you, you can imagine today I can buy any laptop I want. Honestly, <laughs> honestly. God is, God is, you see, a lot of times we, we do these things not knowing what God has prepared for us ahead. Yeah. And I think one of the things that the devil used to fight against us is the knowledge of your insufficiency exactly. instead of the revelation of, of his what is, yes, what has been kept in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. So, you mentioned Papa Sam, an interesting, loving man of God. Um, I think you've mentioned him to me that he was your first disciple. Tell me what was the, uh, what was it like? Your relationship with him in Calabar there, the discipleship, what was it like? Okay, um, towards the end of my service, he came to NYC orientation. Um, he okay. came to NYC, uh, NCCF rather, sorry, to mm. preach. You know, we had a state conference then, and he was part of the speakers. The speakers, okay. So when he spoke, 
he, he made altar call for missions, those mm. interested in missions, mission. and I saw myself. You are passionate. <laughs> <laughs> volunteering for missions, wow. and that was how we connected. So when mm. I was done serving, he had a place just like what you're doing now. Oh, okay. Yes, he okay, had okay. a place. Where with, people stay, yes. brethren, okay. So that was what gave me the opportunity to present to God. After I was done, I went to his place and... Mm. Uh, he started, I started asking questions, questions. he answers, okay. and um, like that till I became the mission coordinator in Calabar. Oh, wow, glory yes. to God. And that was how I met him and built a strong relationship. That is, that is powerful, you know, a, a loving man indeed. Now, um, let's talk about journey, your journey of growth. Um, from Calabar, how did you proceed? Because obviously you are not in Calabar, you are in Abuja. So I want to know, and we want to know, the journey from Calabar. How, how did God move you from there? And where did God move you to? And what was like the next phase of your preparatory um, program? In this, yeah, so just throw light on that. Okay. Um, I was in Calabar, I think in 2016. Um, there was a, a conference in Unical. Okay, uh, Unical, okay. Aposarume was invited to, as a guest minister. Mm. And um, I happened to serve with a brother that was staying in his house then. Oh. Yes, I've uh, forgotten his name now. A two brother. Wow. He was living in his house then. So. And that the, was what year? That was 2016. Wow. Yes, 2016. So the brother said he was going to see him. Okay. That we should attend the program. So I followed him. And because the brother stays in his house, he granted us access oh, to, see to see Papa. Papa. And when I met him, um, he told me that, um, well, God has something serious with you. Mm. But it depends on how serious you are with God. Hmm. So, um, I told him, sir, I'm One serious. of few words. <laughs> he said, okay, if you are serious, then wait, let's see what will happen this evening. Hmm. So, I didn't go home again okay. after that encounter. I stayed from morning to evening. The program was to start in the evening. Hmm. I was in the chapel praying to evening, and then during that period, he made a declaration about, he saw 12 angels with 12 government, 12 intercessors mm, were rising and all mm, of that. Mm, mm. Though I didn't fall under the power, yes, I was sir. just weeping. Wow. You know, I was just weeping where I was. And, and that was how I left that meeting. And then after I was done with service 2015, 2016, I went to, the Lord spoke to me. I went for contact, one of the, I was in contact with exactly, my cousin. Exactly, yeah. yes. So I went for contact in October, and there was a, cha a little challenge they okay, had there. Okay. The generator. Oh, I, I remember that. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So Daddy was on yes, the pulpit, and he said, You need three people that can give them 20,000 oh, to fix the generator. Gen. Yes, so I was part of the three persons, and that was how I, I met God servant, Apostle Michael Rubu. Okay, yes. that's how you're an Urubu connector. Yes, because okay, okay. he was the second person. Okay. So the third person, I can't remember him Oh, again. wow. So when we gave the money that he called us into his office and he prophesied to us, he told mm. Mike, ah, you, you already have my spirit. Then he looked at me and said, mm. God has something for you, but you are not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was always offended because one, I, I was fasting all through. Praying all through, doing everything, <laughs> every how else should I be ready, you know? <laughs> but after the contract, I went back to, to put, uh, Calabar and continued my mission Your work. Your mission work. And after some time, the Lord, I had a vision, the vision I was sharing. I saw mm -hmm. Papa riding a Vespa machine. Okay, yeah, yes, yes, I remember. There was nobody vision. behind him. But I saw myself seated on his mm. neck, and he was moving. From that scene, I saw us in a plane together. And then after the, the, the tour with the plane, we returned back to Makodi with um, 
trailer load of harvest. All kinds of fruit were in this mm. was in this trailer. That's that's massively prophetic. As a prophet, I can see what that that's massively, massively prophetic. Yes. So when and I, you're having this vision as of that time. 2016. Everything that I'm living now mm. happened in 2016. The whole download came in 2016. Both this ministry that I, yes, I am sir. doing now. Yes, yes. So when I came out of that vision, the Lord spoke to me. He said, it's time to go to Makodi. Mm. So I went to Makodi and joined Adula. Uh, I did yeah, the, the Bible first school. basic course. I think you people were the first set. No, we were the second. Second set, okay. Mike was, Mike said we were the first. Okay, okay. Yeah, so okay. when we went, we were the second set. Second set, okay. Of the Adulam school. So, um, I'm not sure I was in Makodi as of that time anymore. No, you were not. Okay, you yeah. were not mm. in Makodi at that time. Do I heard of you? <laughs> I I can tell how much is in your pocket. <laughs> you know? Yes, sir. So, mm. I went to Makodi and did the first basic course. And um, mm. at this point, I didn't know that the Lord wanted me to stay in Makodi. Food, and you had food. not officially submitted to Apostle Arame yet? No, not, okay. not yet. Okay, okay. So after the basic course, I went back to Calabar again. Mm. Then in one encounter, again, the Lord said, move. Okay, I returned back for the Adulam the, uh, regular yes, course. A regular course here. Yes. It was after the regular course, the Lord now spoke to me. He said, stay here. Wow. Yes. Say stay here. That was that should be 2017, 2018 now. This is after you've labored in Calabar already. Yes. You abandoned stay. everything and then start again. They stay here. So we, we, we stayed there. Mm. Already from the basic class, I was found out. I don't know mm. how they found me out. So they started giving me okay. a microphone to lead prayer okay. in the ministry. So beautiful. So um how um, how did you come about submitting to Apostle Arome and what was the training like, you know, in RCM? For those who may not have an idea of what the training is like in RCM, because, you know, today um, a lot of people tend to gravitate towards men of God that have some form of, you know, visibility, you know, they like the way they teach, and on, on TV, they see the manifestations and that, you know, pushes them towards this man. And, you know, a lot of them come, I experience it too. They come and tell you, oh, just lay hand on me. Let me get the impartation and power. But at least I know personally that true impartation comes by discipleship. Because if you read scriptures, you discover that a non-disciple was never imparted by Jesus. Yeah. The people he imparted consciously mm. were the people that submitted to discipleship. So how was the RCN discipleship program like? How was that environment? Because personally, I know it helped me. Yeah. There were a lot who were all running amok until we came under that ecosystem. So just give us an idea of how that ecosystem was like and how it affected you. Maybe throw some lights on examples of your, your routine, the routines that you kept. And yes, let's... Okay, um, thank you so the much. The captain. <laughs> <laughs> um, my experience at the RCN camp was, was heaven on earth because mm. that is where I gained stability, I gained some level of maturity, mm. and a lot of stuff. You know, um, I listen to Papa a lot. I yes, listen to yes. his sermon. So I already understood, and understood his principles. Yes, yes, yes. So when I got to Makodi, I was not in a rush to meet with him. Mm. I, and one thing I observed there is you learn by observation. Observation, that's true. Yes, they, they, they throw the platform open, open for you. Just learn. Look at what is happening. Take what you can take, apply to yourself and mm. grow. And which is what I did exactly. Um, I love that. When I, I went, I saw that the tent was never closed. Yes, it was always it open. It was always open. I and remember we were sleeping there those days. Yes, again, uh, there is a structure. So when it became clear to me that I was supposed to submit to daddy, mm. I, I knew that he was still working at that time. 
Yeah, it was so quite he never easy. had enough time to for anybody. But there were men that had his spirit. And exactly, mm. and he said, "Submit to me through this man." That oh was, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. He got close to that. The chief done. Yes, exactly. chief done. Yes, yes, so I understand. Chief Donatus, I and um, I think Apostle Robo. And yes, you, and me that time. Who yes, were directly under, under his him. supervision. And yes, because he yes, is a yes. prayer man. Yes, me and him connected so deep. It was. <laughs> it <laughs> so was beautiful. Anytime he comes to the tent, he will see me in the hall pray. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> Every time he comes around, he see me there praying, and he just fell in love with me. Oh! And, um, he started showing me, okay. On the stage, do like this, mm. don't do like this, do like this, don't do like this. You know? mm. So he took that responsibility, uh, responsibility of supervision. Of supervision. And, and then Papa was just there for the oversight. You oversight. Know? Okay. And i tell you something. My first interaction, I was trying to say it on my platform on Sunday, but I couldn't okay, because, because of, of time. time. Yes, yes, yes. My first interaction with Daddy was, he called me. He said that... Um, do you have international passport? I said, no, sir. He mm. said, okay. He counted 23,000. Wow. And gave it to me. He said, go and get a passport. I want to send you to Uganda. Mm. Uh, I want you to go to Uganda. And um, wow. uh, when you come back, then I know you have learned the song of the others. He said, in Uganda, the women there will want to come and have mm. children for you. Mm. They will offer themselves for you. So I think that was another way of taking your training to another to level. another level. So oh. I was oh. conscious of that. While we were preparing for the takeoff to Uganda, mm -hmm. um, a lot of stuff. Um, that, you know, before that time, me and uh, Apostle Michael became very close. In yes. fact, we were living in the same house at that moment. Okay, okay, yes, okay, so, okay. And um, the Lord spoke to me in 2019. He told me, 2018... 18th of December, 2018, was my birthday. Yes. So I took three days dry fasting. You used to fast a lot. You still fast a lot. <laughs> you still fast. Trusting the Lord for a word for the next mm. phase. And uh, he spoke to me, said, uh, 2019 was the year of emergence. I never knew what he meant. I remember you told me that. Then. So, because um, Mike uh, came back from his visitation to his father, and he told me, say, oh boy, I was praying, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, 2019 was the year of emergence. I said, ah, this is what the Lord told me while I was praying. Yes. You know? Wow. He said, oh, well, forget that thing. I did tell you what God told me today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we started calling ourselves the year of emergence. Emergence. The emergence of the monarch, you know. We, 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 I remember. Yeah, exactly. I remember so, yeah. Oh. We now decided to draft a program of fasting, prayer, and study. Prayers, yes, yes, yes. We did that for like from January into March. I want to ask something. You know, sorry for cutting you short, sir. You know, you told us you were staying in tent, and then yes. now you're saying you're staying with um, Mike in that place. I met you, people. So, how did you come about even going there? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I became, I grew very I knew fast. Because I knew tent commander that time. As I, I grew very <laughs> yes. fast in tent because mm. of my commitment to the prayer and oversight. And okay. All. So I became the tent commandant. And then um, after my Adulam program in 2018, mm. uh, the Lord told me to stay. At that time, they introduced something in the Adulam program where students are sent to different ministries on yes, request yes, 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 for yes, yes. internship. Yes. So my friends that we finished together wanted to okay. go to Abuja with for internship. Plan. Okay. But in the place of prayer, the Holy Spirit said, "No, stay here." So while I stayed, wow, most of me them and uh, yes, me and Norupo now connected deeply. So mm. um, I was in his house for this fasting I was talking about. Okay, yes, the, okay, because okay, he was okay, traveling. Okay, okay. So I told him, well, since you will not be around, and I, I want, want to a place yes, to, yes, yeah. to just stay with the Lord. He said, no problem, I should go to the house. So when he came back, after we shared our similar yes, 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 encounters, yes. encounters, he now told me that, okay, I'm welcome to stay since he stays in his room alone, alone. that we could stay together. 
I think our brother Reverend Hughes too was yes, uh, around. Yes, Reverend Hughes. <laughs> no, in the house was a two. Ah, it two was an amazing flat. time. Yes, yes. Uh, Reverend Hughes and one of his pastors were in one room. Yeah, and yeah. An apostle was in one room. So I and Apostle now stayed in one room. Oh, so and that was when you were really now connected. We really okay. now connected. So, and we started that program. And I think on the 1st of March, that was his birthday, there was mm. a, a message that went online. And the Lord amplified it. Mm. So his invitations and everything increased. increased. And one day he was traveling. He asked me, we should travel together. And based on... Oh. how the discipline I have been and the True. level of understanding I've had, Papa always shout, don't take off like a tornado. tornado. <laughs> <laughs> so I say, ah, uh, Lord, I went to tent, I have to go and pray, Lord, if it's not time, please take it from his mind because mm. I was actually uh, a bit not... You've always been a cautious person when yeah, it comes to this. Yeah, I was very things, conscious yes. not to offend the Holy Spirit, and mm -hmm. I didn't want to go ahead of my exactly, time. Exactly, exactly. Because you were still under discipleship exactly. with Papa. So mm. I went, pray, and the next time he brought it up, I said, okay, we should. Mm. So I, we traveled together. I think our first mission together was in a, Obubura. Is it Obubura or Obudu? Okay. A unical Obudu branch power of God broke out. He preached and uh, he called me to lead the people to pray. We prayed. We prayed. Was this your first public Yes, meeting Min with him. Okay, with him. Okay, yes, okay. Yes. Prior to that, Reverend Tony has given me a meeting. Yes, yeah, yeah, obviously. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, all yes. Of that. So, but that was the first major outing with him. And then from there, we moved to uh, I think he had two meetings clashing. One in okay, Lafayette, okay, one okay, okay. in yes, 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 Anambra yes. State, Newe. So he asked me to go to Newe for him and take a meeting, the first and second session. So he would so be in the other place. So that was the meeting he preached, Four Wings of Revival. Oh, yeah, that message yes. really went. And he yes, preached yes, and I prayed and the thing went everywhere. Mm. So it looked as if we bonded deeply in this thing and then we started Traveling mm, together, brothers. yes. Mm. Uh, I was a bit conscious because I was still the conscious power, yeah. of the fact that. But then, I think I, I was. I took a lot of things lightly mm. because uh, I assumed that um, Papa was happy with the movement we were making together, which I know he was. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, there was no um, official seal on it. Okay. I, okay, I, for, I in my mind, I felt okay. It was still RCN ministry okay, that okay, 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 okay. we were moving together, and um, it happened that when the wave of what was happening outside came home, Papa now made it official. Okay, okay, yes, okay, okay. To, to just give you people that backing. Exactly. Oh, beautiful. And I told Mike to uh, oversee the youth arm of, of the ministry. Of the ministry, okay. You assist. Papa has always been supportive of, you know, has, almost yes. everyone that has come under his wings. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Yes. So he now, became, uh, he now made you and him the pastors of the youth. Yes. So... Um, he now allowed your traveling ministries exactly. for the OK, I understand now. Exactly. That's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You know, okay. I, um, I, I need to say this at this juncture. I okay. saw some comments online. And um, yeah. some people, I saw a guy, he wrote on one of my posts. He said, I'm a foolish son oh. who refused to bring glory to my father and the Lord, Apostle Michael Rope. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that you message. See, these laughed. people are lying, you know. <laughs> these are lying, brethren. I love. I said, I just deleted it. Normally, I don't talk, you know. Oh, okay. But I feel. But what would make them say that, you know? There's, I don't there's know. nothing like that. Throughout our travel together, 
Mike has never called me his son anywhere. His friends will call each other, you know, we call exactly. each other brother. I wonder friend. where they got this narrative from. But to anyone that want to know, okay, okay. We were both sons in RCN. Mm. I was a pastor there, he was also a pastor. A pastor. There. He was a lecturer too, I Ex think. In the Bible school. Which I was also, after my graduation, I was also inducted into okay, the okay, faculty. Okay, okay, into the faculty. Yes, okay. yeah, we, we started together there. And, uh, so you both, because I knew that time you guys used to travel a lot. Yes. You know, you, you would call me that time, you guys, he would call me. Sometimes you would call me and tell me about, you know, the things you guys encountered on the road, the challenges. Many times you guys escaped accidents ah, and ah, yeah, it's it amazing. Was, it was not funny. Oh. I remember those days I used to be very pissed off. I said, you guys should rest. How will young men like this be? <laughs> One of the scariest <laughs> aspects of it was when we went to Wukari. I remember that day, ah, yes. Wukari, Zakibia. Was, they were fighting. It was the last bus stop. Yes. If a thief man cannot carry you across. Across that place, yeah. So they drop us at the last bus stop at Zakibian, and then we have to wait for an house man mm. to carry us and cross. A Juku uh, man can't cross. That's amazing. A native man can't cross. So an house man crossed. The whole place was like a dead zone. Wow. You could leave, if a pin dropped, you could hear it. And fear was palpable. Death and it was, was a communal clash. When we were done with the program leaving, they were dragging a corpse off the road. You see, a lot of times people don't know why Jesus, you know, would exalt certain persons. I remember those days too, Papa too would travel all over Nigeria, spending his own personal money, and you guys too would hazard your safety, your lives, and this was because of youths. Many times, the Lord, the Lord has been merciful, you know. Mm. There was a time we were going to the east, I think, close to Oka, immediate, this bus overtook us on mm -hmm, the way. Mm -hmm. And after a few minutes when we came, we saw the bus parked with double traffic gate, people coming out of the bush. <laughs> they were just robbed, I'm robber. So, <sighs> are there, if the danger wants to happen, it happens before we get there, or after, well, after we you have left. Yes. Oh, yes. I know most of the times this special protection, you know, is because first of all, God sent you people. And number two, there is now a spiritual oversight over people. Because you just imagine, you know, what would have happened, God forbid, the two sons of Apostle Arome going to preach and then this and that happened. Yeah. Uh, we, we give God praise for, for that, you know, we give God praise. You know, um, I, I, would, I would ask a very, you can choose to answer this or not, but... Um, I feel I should also ask this question because, you know, at some point, um, it seemed as though we faced the trials that every son will face with his father, you know. And um, this trial can either make or break. These trials can reveal who we truly are, whether we're truly you know, consider this person to truly be one who the Lord has revealed to you that this is the one you should follow in Christ, or this is the one that has bettered you. Because I remember those days when we began to connect, you know, we knew that God had something for us. I remember when we first met, we first spoke on the phone first, you know, we shared certain revelations, and then we met physically, I think, through Michael. And then I remember when me and him first met, and Reverend Hills and Ikoro. You remember Ikoro, our friend, yeah, you know? Yes, yeah. Yeah, uh, we first met. I think it, it, one night, we all just converged in, yes. in the tent there. Um, and later, I think when I was done with um, my college of education, I, obviously, I didn't graduate. I <laughs> As a <the> Taliban. <laughs> <laughs> I scrapped. <laughs> so I, I go back home, took my bag, and I told my parents, I'm leaving home, I'm going to tent, and that's where I'm going to be staying. Mm. My dad was not comfortable with it, obviously. <laughs> Your fathers are protective. But when there, Ikoro was already staying in tent. Yeah. You were not yet with us. I think you were in Calabar in those days. Mm. Yeah, And um, we met that night. We spoke. We, it, it, it was true, Ikoro, we even met each other, you know, because I remember... Mike was just coming from Christ Embassy. Um, Hills had left Christ Embassy. 
as of that time, and he was, uh, you know, Doing running his walk. ministry. Yes, yes, yes. He was the couple. Um, amazing work. God is doing wherever he was there. And um, we connected. I'd, I'd known Apostle Arome from around 2, 9, 2, 10, okay. especially 2, 10. If you've been in Makori for long, you'll know that there is a yearly program they hold. They call it Alarm of the Spirit, an amazing program that has imparted many years in Makori there. So I think 2, 10... In fact, there are two programs we normally attend around that January. You have Alarm of the Spirit, and then you have School of Prophets in Change Community. Prophet Justice Ogwiji was the one who, you know, was pioneering that. And um, that's when I first saw Apostle Arobe. Okay. We already knew that, oh, there's one apostle called Apostle Arobe, you know, whose English is difficult to understand, <laughs> you know. But um, <laughs> well, first, sweet. he's beautiful. Yeah. And you know in those days, oh! God, you know, <laughs> Papa has just reduced it to carry people along. Exactly. <laughs> you, you know you are receiving something, but you can't ah, write it. You, you, can't, know, you write. can't write it down. It's life. That it's life. Honestly, it's yeah. life. And you see, that fountain that got better with him was not too common. I remember in those days, the, this all-trans, um, Papa Chris Delvan too had this all-trans, you know, when he was worshipped, mm -hmm. he would speak mm -hmm. and... and Apostle Papa was coming with this fresh thing in Makodi in a place dominated by orthodoxy and you know conservative kind of Christians. So yeah, we, yeah. I saw him and I remember in that program, I think it was Methodist that Alam of the Spirit was held. And I saw him and I said, What kind of man is this? We had a small prayer group in those days, but in Bearers, you know, with uh mentor at that time, Pastor Victor Onuche, amazing man of God. God is also using greatly in Makodi there. Um, and then we attended. It sparked up something in my spirit. You know, but the man was like a spirit. You know, so you, you don't know whether Abu Zaruma is in town or not. You just, we, we see him as this God. Because, yeah, spirit. Yes. Thing. And then we are not privileged to meet that time in RCN tent. And we connected, and then I packed my things and started staying um, in that place. It was amazing. You remember, I remember many nights I'll be running away from Naivi. <laughs> you know, I was coming from o o Omega background, you know, so um, that's where we're coming from. Okay. I was a member, yes, I was a member of Omega Fire Ministry at that time. I connected properly to Omega when I was in Oju. Amazing man of God I served under there. Pastor Jake Sphere Morgan, amazing, okay, yeah, lovely Pastor man. Jake. Till today, he's still a part of my life. He will be the one, those days, he would tell me, Joel, you have a gift. Gift is good, but focus on the word of God. Mm. Focus on the word. You know, and the mentality we had is manifestation. manifestation. Live Bible and manifest. Manifest. What can your God do? <laughs> what can your God do? <laughs> and I thank God because although a stream had been bettered mm. in me, if we were not governed by scriptures, and that's why I appreciate God for Abu if we were not governed by scriptures, we would have entered into error by now. Yeah. Terribly into error. Yeah, obviously. You know. Obviously. And so I think that process, I remember the first time physically now spoke to Papa. I met him. I said, I want, I want to start up a prayer. This day. I started staying in tent. You know, he would observe you first. He would not say anything to you. <laughs> Papa told me. He said, this discussion, um, we should not be having it yet. That you, it's in the next two years. That you can't. <laughs> you know, the, sorry to cut yes. you. These, because I understood these principles when I came into Makodi, I never attempted to see No one. He was the one that called for me when the time came. I stayed there for like two years. <laughs> two years without any contact with him. It was my friend that motivated me. He said, he said go on, go on, ask him, go on, tell him about the ministry. I went there, I said, you know, he knows that I used to call my ministry God's Army Revival Ministry. <laughs> <laughs> so when he told me that I was heartbroken, I said, oh, God, why did I even go and disturb myself? I said, you stop, but he was observing us, you know. And um, amazing... Um, time we had, I need to say this before I ask the next question, amazing time we had with Papa. I remember Papa used to feed us free of charge because none of our parents gave us anything to contribute to. He would feed all of us. I remember um, those days even Reverend Hughes was staying there, Ikoro, me, yeah. 
Mike would come once in a while. You know, he would be coming because of us, you know, mm. from his place to, to stay with us there, from his sister place, I think, to stay with us in rest. And it was an amazing time we had with, um, with that discipleship. And that a, a conclave was actually forming under um, our mentor, Chief Donuts, who was the Papa set over us. Yeah. Uh, but at some point, when this whole thing started coming, you know, it's no news that it seemed as though there were certain lines we unknowingly crossed, you know, and as young men, there were certain things we did, which if we look back today, we say, ah, we shouldn't have taken this step because now we know leadership, we know submission, we know that there are certain, yeah, so um, I, today we see media, media houses painting their own story. I don't know where they are getting these uh, stories from, but I want you to also throw a little like that if you want to, you know, on um, what caused the rift, how you found yourself in Abuja, and how you now reconnected back with Papa. You know, that, that timeline, what happened during that period? <laughs> <laughs> Joe. <laughs> the captain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this thing, I've been quiet about it for the yes, past never three years. Thank you. Yes, Thank I've you. I've never made any public statement. Public statement, yes, yes. I no refer to it at all. And the reason is because I I choose to be very, I choose to be private. Yes, and, yes, I understand. That's true. I, I believe in talking to God about my issues. Your issues, yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, of course, like I said, um, when me and uh, Gus Avant, Apostle mm. Michael, became very close, our relationship grew from just acquaintances to brothers. Mm. And I remember why, how it happened, you know. During my graduation from Adulam in 2018, they were doing impartation service for us and for mm. the faculty members. So I think it was Apostle Gideon. Papa had prayed for him. Yes, and yes, yes, Apostle yes. Gideon was praying for Apostle Michael. And uh, I was watching. And then it was as if something jumped from him and landed on me. Mm. That was the first time I fell under power. Mm. And I was on the ground shouting, I will go, I will go, I will go. <laughs> I didn't know where I was going to, you know. <laughs> I was shouting. I go. That's not I, where I was going to. I didn't know what was up. <laughs> so it was after that scene that me and him now became very, very close. close. And then I had to move to his house, and then mm. we started praying and fasting together, started doing a lot of stuff together. So as the Lord opened his way, I was already in his mm. house. He told me we need to start traveling. And I saw the, 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 the burden, how massive it was. I, I said, I okay, it when I received time, yeah. the clarity, we joined, I joined him and we started moving. As co-laborers. Yes. Mm. Though then his horn was what was exalted. So oh, I was yes, just yes, 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 helping. Yes, the supporting help. role. And I remember he always told me, he said, Kai, Ogbe. I don't want you to be known as my PA. True, you know? true, true. So he was everywhere of that. we yeah. go, he he always yes, made I can attest to that. That's true. and yes. all of that. But again, God was so gracious to us. So one of his disciple, one I yes, think yes, Owena yes, yes, Sunday, yes. God spoke okay, to him okay. in Kano to relocate to Makodi. Oh, that was so all lesson the body from you. Yes. Now. So when okay. Owena came, Owena took over the job I was doing as organizing the okay, meetings yeah, 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 and all of that. Cool. And then I focus on the traveling. Some of the meetings, he couldn't go. Yes. I went for him and then, and your then own started receiving too. invitation. Mm. That was how we started. But unfortunately for us, um, you know, Satan know the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Satan know That's the a rest. new slogan, uh, yes. Satan know the rest. <laughs> Satan know the rest. Unfortunately for us, um, there were few persons that were not, not happy okay. or comfortable with what the Lord was doing with us at that time. And uh, we started hearing all kinds of stuff. And Satan also manipulated gossip, <sighs> you know, what was not said. And ah, all. It, was, it was terrible. It was terrible. It was a terrible time, you know. But 
I think it was even both ways. It was both ways. They said, Mike said this, they say I said this, and Papa's ear were filled with what. And you people too are hearing that those people also are saying things and it was both wrong. <sighs> they said Papa has cost us. <laughs> and five years to die. <laughs> you remember? But this was the same man who said you before fought that. Okay, go into this ministry. Yeah, you know, no. At the initial phase, he released us into this youth ministry, mm. campus invasion and all of yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. But when they started coming back with negative feedback to him of what we were doing. But what type of things did you people hear and... How did you okay. verify that this... For instance, um, for me... Yeah, they, just speak about it. Yeah, for me, they told, they told, from what I heard, they said, I said that if I leave RCN, the prayer arm of the ministry was going to die. <laughs> what you meant prayer then? <laughs> Satan know the rest. <laughs> Satan know the rest. I, I know myself. I'm not um, this that foolish to, yeah, I know I to make such a trans. But of course, I might maybe jokingly or... Okay, or Satan, not, you may not know. Exactly. Okay. So I had to take the responsibility. As a but wise son. That's I true. was in Casino when... Um, Apostle Michael called me and said, um, Papa has released him, and um, he told him to tell me that I am also released. You know? mm. But I, I knew there was a problem. So okay. I was ministering in Kasina. I left Kasina, flew down to Abuja, then moved to Makodi, and um, I rushed down to Papa's house. Papa said he was not going to see me. Mm. I went like three, four times. He said, he is, not yet. he's not seeing me. So I became frustrated. And at this point, I just got a house because the house where I and Mike were. Yes, yes, we yes. We've got in a yes, lot yes, of yes, disciples you guys that were coming. Anymore, yeah. Yes, Mike moved out. I was the one staying there. So the disciples were becoming much. Too so much. I also had to get another place. I remember you told me, I yes, you got an apartment. Yeah. I moved into that house one week. Only one week? I stayed there one week. And that one week was... I spent it in dry fast okay. because at this point I was confused on what to do. Um, Papa was not willing to see me, was not willing to hear my own side of the story mm. and I was released. But it was later I discovered that he understood how mm. close I was with Mike okay. and he respected that um, our that relationship bond. and yes, our bond. Yes, 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 he yes. knew that if Mike leave, I might also want to leave. Yes, yes. So it's so okay, you guys not, just go together. Exactly. Like maliciously did ex it. Exactly. Uh, so, wow. But I wasn't comfortable in my spirit. So I went into the closet and I spent like seven days in dry fast asking the Lord what to do. Uh, on the fourth day, the Lord showed me a vision. I saw a quick vision of myself praying at Glory Dome. Mm. So the Holy Spirit told me, go to Abuja and be praying there for now. Mm. That was how, you remember I called you? Yes, I remember, yeah. Uh, and um, I said, oh boy, it's like God said, make a day come up with you. Mm. I it said, oh boy, easy. come It wasn't here, an come easy here, decision. Yeah. No. And that was how you I, came around. I came around and I was praying. I obeyed what he said, but leaving Guarimpa to Glory Dome wasn't easy. At you all. Know, I was driving there every day. And then the security structure there didn't mm. make what I really wanted. That's true. So that made me even believe that maybe God wanted me to submit to the Petrarch. Uh, okay, Dr. Pope. your mind. Yes, because I saw him in visions and all of that. And, and I was granted access. I actually saw him when daddy was not uh, responding to me again. Mm. So I knew I needed to quickly hide my head somewhere. Mm. But... But, you know, to chip in something, a lot of people don't know that when we have these issues with our spiritual father, sometimes it's actually a trial of sonship. Yeah. You know, if I, if I knew the things I know now, there are certain hasty decisions one would have not taken, no, no matter not, what. You know, one thing mm. I, 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 I would like to say, you know, men, elder, elder brothers like Reverend Opore mm. and elders like, Evangelist, he gave to Chukui, Chukui, yes, yes. They spoke to me. They told me that no matter what, I should stay. 
and mm. um, as you don't move yet, let them see how they can pacify Papa. And yes, all yes, sir. But I, I told them that Kai. At this level, I don't think Papa will trust me. Oh. Uh, if I'm to continue to stay, um, I will be paying a price too heavy for me to pay to because be, okay. I will now be forced to begin to do things to win his lawyer, to show him uh, that I'm And that's not how we are taught to serve. Exactly. Yes. I, I, and then I will be forced to be living a pretentious it's life. To the eye service. Eye service. So I, did, I, I observe it as in... So when the Lord gave me the option of coming over to Abuja to pray, I was happy. Mm. Um, it was in that prayer season that Apostle Michael reached out to me. He said he has received clearance to start his ministry. And um, since this is what we are facing, he doesn't think we should go our separate way yet. That I should, if God has not given me, go ahead to start my work. I should join him. Let's build this ministry he was about to start. Okay. So join him as an assistant or? It's just to support what okay, he Okay, as a friend, yes, you know, since you're already on ground. Yes, exactly. And he, it was a clear discussion. He told me, any time I feel it's time to move. Okay, you can now go on your you know, way. Okay. We give the support. And that was exactly what that we That period did. I was jumping in my parlor. <laughs> telling people you are fake. <laughs> <laughs> and when we started, the Lord showed us mercy, you know. Amazing what God is doing with him now. And, yeah. But during the, I saw the glory that was coming, the affluence, you know, in the place of prayer. I saw everything. Mm. It was so clear. So I knew that if this thing should hit me here, I might not be willing to... Go and to start this labor I'm laboring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but and then twice I um when the eighteen became glaring after we started for like six, eight months mm. that it was time for me to step aside. I remember you told me, yes. I told him. He felt it wasn't time. So he said it's not time that I should reach out. Um he now called our uh, elder. Uh, our elder. And elder said, Kai, 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 say it's not time. I said, okay. So we, we died the matter. You sacrificed a lot too. Yes, wow. and we, we continued. But after like a month or two, it became very obvious. Mm. So I had to tell him again. I said, bro, this thing, man, I see the get a more. Mm. He said, ah, that means this time around, it must be the Lord that if that's the case, um, it is good to jump in when while the water is still being steered. And that... No problem. The church was going to pray for me mm. and, and bless me so that I would go ahead and do... Which they did. Which they did. And uh, that was how I left and started this work. But this time we were still operating. You know, we are not yet connected back, reconnected back to power. When I, I knew that it was time to <clears> leave, <throat> I knew that the Lord, every night, in fact, I told Mike, every night I would see Papa. Yeah, I remember you were After talking with us. Every <laughs> night, I would see Papa. I would see myself lying down. I would see myself kneeling down. I would see myself on the altar crying. For Papa. It was terrible. I said, who is praying this prayer on my head? <laughs> Go so back to your father. You I, told, I told my, I said, boy, see what did happen? He said, Kai, it's like God is trying to heal my heart of, of bitterness. And you know, as an intercessor, you can't, you can't, you you can't keep grudges. Mm. Anybody who is in the business of prayer, you can't keep grudges. No, you can't keep you, you so bitterness. That really, yes, it, that was. Not I've it. never known you to be a bitter person. So no. I, 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 I say that he should pray about it and let me know what he, th he thinks. So it was later he wrote to me and told me that I th he thinks that um, since the Lord is steering me towards starting this work, I should reach out to Papa and let him know. I try to make peace and all of that. But at that time, I have already written to Papa based on what I was feeling. Okay. And that was when Papa said, this is your letter. Ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Our father. <laughs> I said, Daddy, please. You know, I didn't even understand it then. I was like, ah, okay, what exactly did I do mm. that, or that is unforgivable, you know? I never knew. That was when wisdom ministered to me. You don't write letters you don't to write, fathers. write letters to You elders. go back. That's true. You know, you must have received a um, message from a lot of people. 
That's the true. one to submit to you. They are yes, yes. No, no, no. I don't take it serious. You will not take them serious. Yes, you have to come. If you are serious, you'll come. You'll come. That's down. true. And that was the picture that came to me. And I had to travel down to Makoti. And I was amazed when that this homie he, You're welcome. He welcomed me. Do you know that I started hearing that some people are describing as our father and the Lord as bitter and jealous and <laughs> They don't know the man. God have mercy. They don't know the man. Uh, you see, I want to say this to our, our brethren watching. Please, we are, we are believers. We are brethren. We are Christians. Um, I know a lot of time, especially in this world of technology, it is very easy to read your interpretation into someone's action. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll see sometimes I'll make a post. Somebody will start commenting, oh, why are men of God fighting each other codedly? See, we have the same heart. The way I walk with God, if I offend the Spirit of God, and you can't me, sleep, you can't rest. I will come out publicly and say it. I've done it before, because I value heaven. That's how Apostle Arume has trained us. Mm -hmm. The man is all about sincerity, honesty before God and men. You see, and a lot of times we have people out there, you know, who try to paint an image that would keep people away from you because they know that if they come close to you and interact with you they'll find out something different mm -hmm. i think that's under that strategy of the devil personally now you know what i face every day and you know people say oh i'm attacking every man of god you know and the, the funny thing is on my platform who are the people i've actually called their name and said this one is false and when i say someone is false i'm not saying he's a bad person but i'm saying as regards religion, this person in doctrine and in spirit is not accurate. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, say you've tried those who claim to be apostles, apostles and you've and discovered not. them not to be apostles. Yeah. You know, if your error is not publicized, your, rebu your rebuke will not be publicized. If an error is publicized, then the rebuke obviously should be publicized, you know. Look at the people that I say, oh, this one is fake. People like uh, Passion Java. <laughs> please, please, stop. Don't See, name names here. Yeah. You know, this is, a, this is a friendly discussion. <laughs> it's not your Talibanic work, please. <laughs> you see, you see, but see, the truth is this, you know. Our generation do not know what a prophet is anymore. Mm. You know, and we live in a highly politicized generation. Yeah. That tell you, don't talk about it. The, it doesn't the, concern The you. truth is, sorry to cut you. Yes, please. I feel that um, there's a gap in discipleship. And, uh, oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, that's true. There's a gap in discipleship. What we have now is majorly fan, fan base. Oh, yes, yeah. fan base yes. instead of yes. disciples. Okay. You see a lot of striving for, for celebrityhood. Mm. And that is why it looks as if it is fanatic something that we are doing or mm. so this person is for you this person is against me this person that's what makes it difficult now. it's difficult so once some a man of god is accepted by somebody and you are questioning the character of that person or his doctrine they feel you are attacking, attacking. their celebrity or or their man of god and, and they would never sit down to they will not to sit listen. down to listen and again i think my generation, our generation, for instance, we have lost the appetite for the word of God. Yes. Um, a lot of people are just looking for, for instance, I observe when you put a controversial stuff online. It, it flies. It flies a lot. I notice. When you put a, the word. Teaching. A, a nobody listens. Nobody, nobody wants. A lot listen. of people are watching this now, I, I believe, because they feel, oh, maybe they're going to say something controversial. I know some media houses are actually what. You will see the simple discussion now. You will see how they will, they will, they will read the it's narrative to it. It's because we're in the last days. The Bible mm. says they will not endure sound, sound doctrine. doctrine. Okay. It's itching ear. They want to know what is happening. And then the people on the pulpit are also under pressure to give them what they want to hear. Mm. And, that, the, and then again, YouTube is not making it easy. Easy anymore, yeah. Because there's a monetary value True. as long as you can bring traffic to the... And yeah, also, people thing. believe everything is done for clout. You know, if you, exactly. if you speak truth, oh, they're they doing say, it for clout. You know, I wrote something recently, and they said I was chasing clout. I told them, if I want to chase clout, I know what to do. True. We are not 
in this thing for popularity or for anything. True. I wrote about a song. I had an opinion about a song I listened to, and I felt... Uh, you were attacked? Ah. Uh, a lot of people felt, ah, uh, ah. Uh, Ogbe, you have started. Don't deviate from this part. Don't assist <laughs> these people. Yeah, I've heard all these people come and say, oh, this was not the real message God sent you to preach. <laughs> Were you there, Were you there when the message was given? <laughs> See, and this is also a call, you know, wh why I love this discussion, I think we're going to be having more of it with our the various ministry, ministry friends, is to set records straight. Mm. You see, I can relate to the person but not believe in the doctrine. In his doctrine. Exactly. Yeah. The fact that I shake your hands doesn't mean I will stand for everything you stand for. In, there are many people in the body of Christ that do not agree with my approach of preaching. Mm -hmm. I won't force them to do mm -hmm. so because I have been called a prophet. There may be a pastor. Our backgrounds are different. Mm -hmm. Our trainings are different. But this is how I judge. This is how I judge messages. Even though it seems to be presented in a harsh way, what is the aim of this message overall? Does it add to the quality of the gospel of Jesus being preached? If I follow this message, will it lead me to edification? Will it elevate my worship experience? Mm. Or is this thing making me go into the world? If I present an example now in my life and my character, imagine now you see me preaching here today and the next video you see is me dancing with a girl in the club. Mm. I can bring a revelation to tell you that um, the Lord accepts this idea. You know, I'm already saved, always saved. You know, my sins are... And do you know people will follow that? A lot of people will follow Listen, it. I, I observe and I, I discover that whatever you do in this life, mm. as long as you, you're bold enough to believe yourself and you're bold enough to sell your ideas mm. and you're confident enough to market it, you will have followers. That's true. Yes. That's true. If a, 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 in a highly cultured environment like Nigeria, a mm. crossdresser can have over 5 million followers. Followers. Who are, follow who, who are the people? <laughs> so, and now there are thousands of persons that have decided to, go to copy that lifestyle mm. because they were able to market what they represent positively. Mm. So people follow anything. Just be confident, just be bold about it. I know how to market it. I know how to market it. The only thing is time is the judge of all things. All things, that's true. Yes. That's true. It was what uh, I think Gamaliel told the Pharisees yes. when they wanted to go after the disciples. They subjected to time. He said they rose among us one that, that claims himself yes. as to be something, and he was not. And after his, after his demise, we can't find them. Leave these people alone. Mm. So, um, um, before we come to a conclusion, I still thank all of you who have been sharing and who are still watching. This is Minister's Table Talk, right. and it's a new series that um, we've been led to begin. Um, and uh, by the grace of God, we'll be having more of our fellow brethren, ministers, to come discuss some crucial things. Because if we do not have these types of discussion, a lot of rumors that are not true will keep flying. Yeah. Causing rift between people that have never met each other. Exactly. You see? Exactly. And then if we're not careful also as ministers, in a bid to win the people's sentiment, we can start pushing out lies about certain things. Because... There are certain things, certain brothers in the Lord that we started together have said about me that later people will come around me and say, oh, when I came close to you, I discovered this is different. Look at what this is. And those gossips here and there um, affects a lot of things. So I want to ask something. In this whole matter we, fe we previously had with our Father and the Lord, were there areas you later discovered? Like there are some areas I later discovered that I was wrong in this area. I remember how I went back to Papa, you know, you know me how I commit to friendship. Now, I didn't know the depth of everything because there were mistakes I made. And um, when this whole issue happened, instead of me to reach out to my father and the Lord and say, okay, father, um, look at what's happening, look at what's happening. I still proceed with my programs I had with Michael and you and the rest because ours was friendship, you know. And um, I, I, I later discovered that that was not the right move to make. If... 
sons have issues with fathers, everything should be suspended so that those issues can be sorted. And in fact, the Bible said, if you bring your offering before the altar and you discover that someone has something against you, against you, leave the offering and go and settle. Now, I, I, I didn't apply that. And that move looked like arrogance. Yeah. As one who has matured to this level, we are still growing, but as one who has matured to this level, there are some things I look back to. I say, oh, this would have been handled better. Now, we are not going back because we need favors in ministry. Mm. It is possible to prosper in rebellion. In fact, it's possible to rebel against God and still prosper. Oh, yes. right. Cain left God and went to build a city. Yeah. I know our generation always, you know, mark success as the sign that God is with a man. So if they see you with large congregations, I remember how, you know, a lot of people mocked us when we were in the parlor. You know, oh, these guys don't wear a shoe on their leg without asking, oh, what did God tell you people? Why do you people sit on the ground? Why do you people not wear a shoe on your leg? So it's common in our generation. Um, but there are certain things I look back to. I say, oh, I was wrong in this area. I was wrong in this area. And um, I admitted, in fact, when I went back to Makode, I wouldn't even go into the hall. I sat down with my men under the canopy, sat down there. In fact, there are some people that were still attacking and the rest of it. But I thank God we went through that. And I discovered that, okay, a lot of rumors I was hearing about Papa, you know, and some people said he prepared, he has prepared police to arrest us when we come. And when I told him, he laughed. He said, you know, how will really? You know, that was what made the issue linger. Remember, yeah. during the dedication of the embassy, embassy. We, we wanted we, to go. We, we talked about go. it, yeah. Someone called me or sent me a chat on Facebook <laughs> that they have array police <laughs> to <laughs> arrest us. <laughs> and they have instructed the media team to ensure that our face does not appear. That's that crazy. We are coming to, to, to show our face and make and do public stunt, yes. stunt to make people believe that we are still part of the house, and mm. use Papa's name to get invitation. Mm. So that didn't sit well with us. We felt this is a this is something we've all looked forward to, we've all prayed for. And, and that's a problem with gossipers. Gossip, gossip did a lot oh, in this hour stuff. I remember, um, let me just say this. I don't want to go into yes, the please, meeting, please, gritty, please but yeah. I remember me, you, Mike, we had planned to go to Makodi for that FOG slash IEC. I see. Yeah, I remember that, that period. It was that word we heard that provoked or that moved Mike to go ahead to, to publicize his um, ministry, this thing, that same week. Oh. You know, we had planned to wait until that whole... Now, those are the things I say, if we look back to, we just we shake our head. Regret. Because mm. if we had known, there are certain rumors that... We would have gone ahead to see the exactly. police that will arrest us. <laughs> but we acted on the rumors. That's, you know when I told Papa, I said, Papa, they said you would arrest us. So that he laughed. He said, how we laugh? What? What will you people do to me that I will, you know, a lot of people fail to understand that Papa is at a place of rest with the Lord. I've sat with that man. That man is worried about revival. Yeah. He, he, yeah. What occupies his mind is how can the nations be one to God? How can we live an how accurate legacy? How can falsehood die? If you sit with Apostle Aaron Mosai, there are some things I would tell him. I say, Papa, someone is saying this thing about you. It's like news to him because he's not even aware. You see, until I stopped, because, you know, so, I, in fact, one time I had to tell her, I said, Papa, you have, you have this son. Don't worry. I would, I'm a young man, I'm still growing, I, I will fight. He will tell me, Joel, leave these people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, um, you now see why the Bible is heavily against, you know, it's until you experience it, you know the damage these things can cause. I've lost relationship with certain friends because of rumors. Yeah. Yeah. It's, have, deadly. It's, it's deadly. It's deadly. I've had wounds in my heart it's that deadly. I'm still praying the Lord to purge me from because of rumors. Because whether you like it or not, you are a human being. When you hear someone, especially, especially someone you love. someone you love and trust. Yes. And you, oh, this person has said, imagine someone telling you that me, your friend, your brother, have said this about or ridicule your ministry in this way. No matter how hard you try, it, it sits somewhere in your heart. You see? But... Being Christian is in our ability to publicly say, oh, we were wrong here. We were actually wrong here. 
the same way you did when Papa came. We were wrong. There's no, it's not a matter of all that they understand. No, there were areas we were wrong. There were things that we said or did that we wish we didn't do. Consciously or unconsciously. Consciously or unconsciously. And you see, I would advise brethren there, you out there, you see, if someone is your father in the Lord, you know, I'm not, you know, when we're growing in the Lord, we used to watch people on TV and say, oh, that's my father in law, that's my father in law. But I'm talking about someone who acknowledges, acknowledges you as son. There's a direct relationship. Whether you like it or not, at some point you will go through this trial of sonship. Mm -hmm. Now, you come back to your father, not because you cannot survive without him. You can choose, even though if you are, you are suffering, you can choose to suffer and survive without him. Yeah. Exactly. You come to your fathers personally, I look at the future. What legacy am I going to leave behind? There's something Pakumu he said. He said when he started his ministry, he first started his Bible study, you know, teaching the word of God to some people who wanted, you know, extra tutelage mm. after service. Yeah. And it began to grow. A lot of people started coming to that his Bible study. And the church did not, it didn't sit well with the church. So that's okay, listen. Since you've started this, you are going against the, the rule of the ministry and we cannot have this. So there's communicated him. He continued doing that Bible study because he knew that God sent him to do it. And he said that he traveled to the U.S. one time. I met a brother in the Lord and shared this with the brother. Oh, look at what happened to me. I got communicated because of the Bible study. I was And the brother was furious. Why would they do that after all you've done for the church? And he rebuked the brother. He said, no, no, no. They were right to do it. I violated the law of the church. Mm -hmm. That was the principle on ground in that ministry. Mm -hmm. And if I got excommunicated, there we are righteous and right to do that. Mm -hmm. He said something. He said in that moment, he had the opportunity to lambast those people. Yeah. In that moment, he had opportunity to kill them, say whatever, but he chose not to. That testimony alone becomes a legacy for him. Mm. See, not because, um, you know, Papa, he will not give you anything but the word of God, support, prayer, but he is not a politician. If Jesus called you, labor with the Lord and he's going to expand you. Yeah. He doesn't do, you know, uh, you know, we see networking in our generation. Oh, come and preach for him. Uh, raise money there. He doesn't do that. He just works with the Lord. I've brought Papa several to my parlor. In fact, last Sunday was the first time he majorly preached in you know, our church as a guest speaker. If not, he came as a father to our inauguration and then he has been coming as a father to our parlor meetings. Now imagine you inviting someone like Apostle Arome Osai to your parlor. Mm. Do you know there are some people that will see it as disrespect? Mm -hmm. That you are inviting a man of that caliber to your, to your, to your parlor. You, if no relationship, will you dare do it? Will you even dare think of it? <laughs> But he would tell, if you like, take a Toyota, a small Toyota, to go and pick him. Yeah, you know, those first, uh, those earlier period, I used to take cover. He told me, Joel, I don't like this call. It's noise. I don't like it. That shows you the heart of this person. And I feel every of his son took that heart. We are not sophisticated people. We are very, very simple people. But a lot of times, people who watch you from afar, they see you from the lens of their own mind. Mm -hmm. So why it is very important to um, go back to fathers. It's not because you cannot be successful. It's not a matter of success. It's not a matter of um, I can do without him, I cannot do without him. It's a matter of legacy. It's a matter of right foundation. There are certain things that must be done to fulfill our righteousness. True. If it is true seed that you build a relationship with the father, that relationship is not strong, it's false. But, you know, let me say something. We were discussing one time, and we, we shared that it is difficult to find people who labor over people in this generation. Yeah. That's why you see all kinds of politics happening in church. You know, people can rise up to them and say, oh, they send this, their son away, send this, sack this person, drive this person away. It's simply because you rarely find pastors who say, I watch this person grow. I, I, I was with this person when people attacked him, when his name was bad, he was nothing, there was no prospect in him. I stood with this person until Christ was formed in him. You know, if you labor over a person, 
Do you notice that it is difficult to send them away? Of course. If you actually labored over them. Of course. In our generation, it's easy for us to disconnect from each other simply because there is no true labor over ourselves. There's no true connection. It's all about, okay, interest. If our interests align, we connect. Mm. The day I hear that you have scandal, you I disconnect, disconnect from you. How many friends will stand with you in your scandal? You've stood with me in many things. I remember when people were bashing me in cryptocurrency. Papa stood with me. You stood with me. You say, bro, our friendship is eternity. You Please share. You know you told me that you got rejected for a program. <laughs> please share. Please share. Share this. <laughs> <laughs> My God. I remember yes. when we started, um, I wanted to do a program in Uni Abuja, a revival program. Then uh, I wanted to mm. see as many youth I can get to to be part of what we're doing and to set on fire. Mm. So we went, I sent my people, we went to Uni Abuja. University of Abuja? Yes. And mm. uh, true story. And um, they met with the chaplain and the chaplain told them that um, they wish it was another <laughs> person. <laughs> that uh, me, I'm, I'm, I'm a Praise friend Prophet of Joel. Prophet Joel. Wow. And uh, Prophet Joel duped a lot of students here. Jesus in Christ. In currency. That the students will not want to be, they will not even want to hear anything about me. <laughs> Are you serious? I say, oh, what? You know, I didn't tell you for almost No, no, no. You told me that you didn't want it to disturb it, my heart. It, 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 no, but it, you know, the crazy thing is that these people are far, so it's okay for them to think that way. Yeah, yeah. But you is close. You know, uh, that's not actually the truth. But at the end of the day, a lot of times, life will not the be... The truth your... is, you can't explain yourself to at everybody. At all. That's what I'm talking like, about. Like, if not this, this hangout, now, you know... You would never have said people have, I've seen people call me Oropo son. Uh, Are you serious? Lot. I've never responded. I've never countered anybody. I've not said anything um, negative. But because I don't feel I owe anybody any form of explanation mm. as that. But, you know, Luke said something. Uh, there was a season after the Jesus left, a lot of people were bearing stories mm. and testimony we are sharing their own side of the view mm. and he said something in luke one he said for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth mm. in order a declaration of those things which are mostly most assuredly believed, believed among, among us, us. Yes. even as they deliver them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses, eyewitnesses yeah. and ministers of the word it seems good to me also having yes, had perfect understanding, understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. Mm. So he, he felt people carried a lot of stories about the matter, about the life of Jesus, his birth, his resurrection, his ascension. So he felt, I was with these people who had real witness mm. of the whole matter. So mm. I think I'm in a position to, to, set, an order to set an order record. And that was mm. what, but I never felt the need to do so, if not for this podcast. Yes, yes, I yes, yes. I yes. would never say And you, anything. do you know why this, this is important? It's simply because we have a lot of brethren there who sincerely love us. Exactly. You know, they see the wind of revival coming. Do you know it breaks people's heart to hear sentences this media people put out there? I you saw, know? in fact, I thank God for this podcast because yes. the... The, 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 a lot of young people who look up to us now, mm. what they feel we are switching further. Like I saw somebody saying, me, I switched from Oropo to Aposa. I've never. Oh, that's weird. The only attempt I've made since this whole thing happened was to so meet with Dr. Yes, you Paul. told me, yes. And he told me um, he would give me another appointment. I think he went to pray, mm. and, but he never get back to me. Mm. So I took that as a sign. I took that as a sign. And... God was so kind, Papa now responded to me. You know? Thank God for Papa. So a lot of people don't know. It takes, if God tell you this, in fact, I've taken time to pray again and ask the Lord, who is my spiritual father? At the point when it became very, very deep, um, uh, blurry, mm. I was confused. And I had a clear vision. The Lord showed me, Papa. So I just knew. Do you know that um, even me too, there was a time I asked you, I said, okay, I'm, I'm trying to be sure of this, that I told you that God keep, kept telling me, Apostle Aram. Now, as a prophet, it's easy to want to go to a prophet. In fact, you know, I, 
right from when we started praying, I started out, my friends started calling me apostle right from when I, so when I had a Facebook page, I just put an apostle there, you know, but I knew I was prophetic. But I didn't really, I couldn't find a prophet to sit under. It was mostly teacher. And I understand why God wanted me to sit under a teaching apostle who was also prophetic, our father in law, because of what he wanted me to do. Yeah. Because when we are coming up, you rarely found prophets who could teach the Bible, mm -hmm. the word of God. Mm -hmm. We knew the messages were generic. You know, it was about fight, warfare, and you know, that was the True. type of True. generation we were, were raised under. Thank God I had deeper life parents that gave us the basic of Christianity. Foundations. Exactly, the basic foundation. But you know, sitting under the Papa and the ministry, it trimmed us, it you know, helped us to grow rightly. You know, you can grow and grow anyhow. If we have, look at anyone, any, most of the young men coming up today, you know, whether they're directly connected to Papa or not, if anyone is honest, he will tell you that it was the labors of Apostle Arume that bettered this thing. Yeah. I don't know, you know, a lot of people don't give him credit. You know, a lot of people don't, people, some people get angry when I always talk about Papa on, on And they are using his thing. words. And they're using Most this word, of yeah. the words we use now are words that we that he made fresh exactly from, from him, him exactly. You see, Porters. exactly. <laughs> Monaco, now, <Zion. laughs> I grew up under a culture that celebrated fatherhood. It's important because it shows that there is a heritage that existed that is being passed on. Exactly. I always talk about my father and the Lord. It's not for politics. I've I've had followers even before Papa publicly started identifying with me. Right from when I was young, people, anyone who was with me in Arusha and that I knew that people would drive and come and look for one young boy called um, Joel. Joel is Joel here because of the gift I had. So, but the label, when would you celebrate this man? These men are gifts. Under 20, 30 years, if Jesus starts to come, we'll write stories about a man that once lived called so so person, called Pakumi, you call Apostle Mosai, call all these men are gifts. We are seeing a gift of God in our generation. True. So why, why shouldn't we celebrate it? And also, please, you that um, is following us, young men, we are growing. You are privileged to see our growth process in ministry. Yeah, yeah. Many of you have been with us for five years, six years. You've watched us for a long time. You've seen us grow from singlehood to married men today, from small ministries to um, larger assignments. And please don't run with everything you see. Don't be a sentimental Christian. Ask most of the Christians that are online saying, oh, this person did this. This person has lost their call. Why did you hurt your father and the Lord? Oh, why are you attacking? His... Ask them, have they ever prayed about any of these rumors they are hearing? Mm. The every Christian doesn't know how to pray. They don't pray. Or... They don't. They you don't. Know. I can react to something now. And when I go to my room, the Holy Ghost will tell me, this is not the truth about the matter. Some people run here now online to see us lambast one person talk again this one but the idea of coming online and having this chat is so that you can see a more intimate part of our lives because you see the preachers but don't forget these preachers are brothers they are people's sons they have parents they are families and these are emotions that you know we relate with papa as our spiritual father we relate with ourselves as spiritual brothers but he's also an elder he's also someone that has life lessons to teach us we also learn from each other as brothers. When we go through challenges, they meet, the people are not there. It's mm -hmm. we that have each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I'm broke today, he assists me. If I'm sick today, he prays for me, and vice versa, you see. So a lot of times, the, you, may put, you may write a comment or put up a video because you want to, you want clout, you know. You, you piece this one here, piece this one here, and create a story, and obviously, any, including me, I can make dots connect and it will seem reasonable. But the Bible said there's a way that seemeth right unto a man. There are some people that are hearing this thing from your own mouth and they'll say it's a lie. It's not telling <laughs> the whole truth. There must be something, something. If you keep looking for something, Satan will show it to you. You see, there must be something hidden going on. Another thing I also want to reiterate, the fact that people started together um, as friends in ministry, doesn't automatically mean they must be friends forever, mm. you know. And it is maturity to admit that also. Yeah. As we grow, our realities grows, our understanding grows. Convictions Our changes. conviction changes. Yeah. You know, our preferences changes. Yeah. 
And a lot of times, you start very close with someone, and over the years, you guys seem not to connect anymore. It's okay. It's growth. It's growth. From it's, that it's moment, allowed. growth moved from being emotional to respect. We respect each other even though there is no... See Paul and Barnabas. And Barnabas, exactly. Barnabas almost discipled Paul. You know. mm. Yes, but yes. When growth came in, they had sharp argument. Mm. Paul went this way, Barnabas went this way. Mm. But it didn't affect their relationship. Their relationship. There was mutual respect. And I oh, but these other people are doing this. Why is your own different? And then you now begin to find this as a problem where people will come around and say, oh, if it was this pastor, he wouldn't have done this. Why are you doing it this way? And this also reveals the infantile nature of the African church. People would not go to you or me until we are now doing something big out there. And that's when they say, okay, God is moving with this person and the rest. I think people don't like responsibility. People don't like labor. Mm. People don't like uh, being associated with maybe seemingly, should I use the word failure? Mm. They just want to be part of what works, not wanting okay, to bring, okay. be part of what is struggling mm. to make it work. Mm. They just want to be part of a success story, mm. not or a successful story, story. Oh. not a succeeding story. story. Mm. You understand? Mm. So you see a lot of ministries who are still struggling. It's not that people are not aware of them, mm. but they've not come to a point where they catch the attention of certain persons. Mm. So, for instance, you, your ministry is in Wuse. Mm -hmm. Some persons would prefer to travel all the, the way from Wuse mm. to maybe... Uh, Guagualada because of a Something successful story that is there. Mm. So they are part of that one. They are excited about it. But the idea thing is, if we understand kingdom responsibility, you can, if you have seen a successful story, mm. you can also shift and mm. be part of a succeeding story. Yes. And help in any way you can help to make it a successful story. That well. was how Christians were trained in those days. Yeah. You know, that was how Christians were trained in those days. Um, it's so bad now that, for instance, mm -hmm. if I come to your ministry now, for instance, and um, maybe support and serve and mm. try to bring the little I can bring in. They'll turn you into a son. They'll turn you into a son. So he's a son I feel people don't understand the difference between a disciple and one in service in a ministry. Yeah. Because service is a product of sonship, even though in That's discipleship, taking responsibility. taking responsibility. And the other is training. Mm -hmm. One is taking responsibility of service. The other one is serving as a training. As a trainee. Mm. Yes. People don't understand. But I believe, you know, so that we can round up, I believe that the days are coming, the church is maturing. Oh, yes. The, the, oh, church yes. Is, the fact oh, that we're even having this discussion is oh, a yes. sign that the church is maturing, you know, and God is helping us to grow. So um, your ministry is in Kuboa. God is doing something massive in Kuboa. Oh, yes. uh, please tell us about your ministry. What, what do we hope to see? What has God put in your heart? What is the burden for the now for the ministry? And how can people who want to groom themselves in prayer? I can say this about this man of God. Among every one of us that are friends, he's the most disciplined person when it comes to spiritual things. My God. I could, me, among all of us, all of us that are friends. I don't know if you call me. But I can job, tell you, I can tell you. Job. I'm saying this as a prophet. <laughs> you know, the discipline in prayer, the discipline in fasting, the discipline in the word of God. See, we, we are very inspired people. And a lot of times when you are very inspired, you become lazy if you are not careful. You know, because any, if you pray a little, the a rock is open to you. But people like you would build people. These are builders. Someone who can show you a teaching from his life. And those are the tasks of Christian. That's what drew me very close to you because you don't just talk prayer. You know, anybody can come and teach about the dimensions of prayer and yet he doesn't pray. My God. Teach about the realities of prayer and yet he just do shaba, 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 and that's all. Mm. You see, but I know that this is a man of God who travels in prayer. So if you're an intercessor, Wherever you are in Nigeria, you want to come and find that experience of prayer. You know, Embassy of God 
is the place to be. So just tell us something so that we can round up something about the ministry where you guys are now. Where's yeah. the ministry located? What's the body? And um, just share with us. Uh, praise God. Um, Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. Um, before I start, I, before Daddy came in preparation mm. to his arrival, we, we went on a 40 days uh, night VG where we pray for five hours every night until wow. he came. You know, and this period, a lot of people who were weak, you could see somebody standing and pacing for five hours nonstop, wow. crying, pouring their soul out. Eyes open, ears open, you know, having all kinds of encounters in mm. the spirit. That is the kind of environment that you people create. we create. Mm. And um, I person, my personal burden is to help people discover who they are mm. in God. Align them with their scrolls in the spirit so that they live out that life. It's not an easy mm. task. It's not, it's not things that somebody wants to be it's part of. Easy, because that's true. the average believer is trained to receive. Mm. But what we are not doing is we are trying to get you into how to get. Mm. You know? So, for instance, if you come to me, I will, my basic approach, do I pray for people? Yes, sir. But if you want to be a disciple, you want to learn what I do, I will have to carry you through that route. Mm. I don't even mind taking you to the place of prayer. I'm praying with you. That's true. You but do that you too. must be praying, you know, just to, to exercise yourself in the spirit and, and, and become aware of who you are in the spirit. And basically, mm. that is our burden. Part of the burden is the Lord said we should raise an end-time warrior, a righteous Hi. warrior mm. nation. And that is what we are committed to. And I a know what that warrior means. nation. Exactly. People whose ambition is God. You know, people who, whose ambition is God. It's God. Not ministry sources, not mm. uh, people who will use God for who, what they want, but people who are deliberately people whose ambition is God. committed mm. to the service of God and to his kingdom. And part of what our strategy is... Um, we meet every Sunday evening for revival service. Okay, what where, time and where's the location? Because a lot of people want to know the name of the church, the location you people meet. You know, for those who may just be watching for the first time. Okay, we we at um, Kubwa, yes, um, number one eight one Bakori Road. PW. Number one eight one Bakori Road, PW in Kubwa. In Kubwa. The name of the church is. The Embassy of God Ministries The Embassy of God Ministries International. You can also find them on Facebook. Yeah. And you can also search out Apostle Victor E. Ogbe on Facebook and YouTube. Also very powerful um, teachings his media team put out there. And if you are looking for revival, you know, you are looking for revival and prayer. And as he say, to build yourself in the Lord. As, as he's speaking, I'm, I'm just feeling something. And he's going to pray for you all also. But you want to build yourself in the Lord, um, connect with our brother, support the ministry. Um, I think it's something very crucial. A lot of people know how to receive. They don't know how to support, how to provide <laughs> the support system to what is happening. Yeah. And whether I like it or not, the ministry of the 21st century take a lot from a lot of, yeah. A lot I, you know, of People just look at you and say, oh, they have everything figured out. Everything is the, working. The funny thing is when they see what the media puts yes. out, they say, oh, these people have money. Mm. So instead of thinking of how to support, how to support they are thinking how of how to, to get. Yes, I, crazy. You can't imagine the requests we get every day. Same here, financial that's Financial support, financial. And they don't know that you're just trying to get back. Exactly. You're just You have to do what you have to do because it mm. is the work of the Lord. You know? <sighs> Thank you so much. Please let's support um, this great ministry. You can reach out to him on Facebook. His admins will reply, write to them on YouTube or connect to the Embassy of God on ground. In Kuboa, like he said. So please, I know that there are a lot of our brethren who they, they desire this impartation, this prophetic release, this anointing of the Holy Spirit, and they are sincere about it. This is an amazing time, and I, I want to really take this opportunity to ask you, sir, to please pray for our viewers now. Um, there are a lot of people watching on Facebook, YouTube, a lot of people. So just speak something from your heart upon them. I know that one thing 
that's very peculiar which I mean God is that God answers your prayer God answers your prayer so please pray for our brethren before we close out oh thank you Lord Jesus Lord, everyone connected to this live broadcast right now, and those that we watch after now, I ask, O oh God, that your hand of power will be upon them. Amen. Bring them answers to the hidden questions and the hidden cries of their hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I decree an open heaven to everyone whose heart is open, to everyone who believes. Let there be an open heaven of answers. Let the supernatural wind of the Spirit blow upon them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And according as it has pleased you to bestow upon us, the, those struggling with their altar, those struggling with prayer, I ask as a recipient of the spirit of prayer, the spirit of grace, of intercession mm. and supplication, mm -hmm. I release the same order right now. Amen. That as they close their eyes and they hit their knees on the ground, as they open their mouth, let the heavens open. Amen. Let them be sucked in and let them have the glory of experience of intimacy in prayer. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray for those Amen. who are trusting you for one intervention or the other. Let the angels move now. Amen. Let them visit everyone. Amen. Bring answers. Bring intervention. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As you were praying, there is a brother. Mm. You, you are struggling to pay your rent. Um, I see as though your rent is two months due already. You're watching. Uh, the house you're staying is, there's this, uh, the Lord showed me this green um, colored place, you know, that you're staying and um, is somewhat of, of a place where others are staying in this room. The rooms are opposite each other, and then there's a parlor here. And um, surprisingly, uh, in this house, I'm hearing a name that's similar to the name of my brother here, Victor. The Lord is, is settling that by Amen. the power of the Spirit. Amen. He's settling that Amen. in Yeshua's name. Amen. He's settling that in Yeshua's name. Amen. There is someone, you've been on a fast for about four months, and... You've been praying for clarity in your in your spiritual side. Mm -hmm. This is like a four months, two weeks fast, and you just you started it, you know, jokingly, jokingly, and then you couldn't stop anymore, and you've just been pressing into God. Um, I see a visitation happening to you before September. The Lord is going to is going to visit you. The Lord Amen. is going to visit Amen. you. Amen. The Lord is going to visit you Amen. like the third son, Amen. the third male in your house. The Lord visits you by his power and his spirit Amen. in Yeshua's name. Amen. I hear this by the Spirit of God that the, the barrier is cancelled. You know, the barrier is cancelled. The barrier is Aikosila Atarose Makiato Balatamo. God by his spirit, death is cancelled. Death is cancelled. Amen. Oh my God. If you are owing, debt is cancelled. Amen. 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 There is also somebody yes. who mm. is, a, is afraid. I think mm. a wedding is either this weekend or next weekend. Mm, yes. And everywhere seems tight. Mm. The Lord said, Don't worry, I will pay the bills. Amen. Amen. Pay the bills. Amen. Pay the bills. Amen. Pay the bills. As he was speaking, this person whose wedding is close by, I see a name like Grace, like the, the lady name is like, it's like Grace. Uh, the, the, it's, it's, it's as though um, I'm seeing something that has to do like 1.8 million that is urgently needed. Just as the man of God has said by the Spirit, the Lord pays the bills. Amen. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Is there any sick issue you are picking in the Spirit? You want to pray for? I'm seeing a signal mm. Mm. in the heart. In the heart. Heart palpitation. Mm. 
in the name of Jesus, you are arrested. Amen. You are arrested. Something Amen. like this, the stain of oil, of mm. red oil. Mm. Stain of red oil. Mm. I don't know what that means, but whatever it is, we arrest it. Amen. From the heart, in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oops, uh, there is someone, there is a pain a you are having. You know, you started Shama having Kabia. this thing now for the past... Um, seven months, you know, last year started coming gradually, but now it's, it's intensifying for the past three months, in, it's intensifying seriously, and it's something that looks like a pain that it flows like electricity behind your back, you know, and there's a way you stand, you, you feel it flow like electricity behind your back, you know, you, you are watching me, you are sitting down wearing something that has like a touch of blue on it, I'm seeing this armless that has a touch of blue, the Lord heals you now. Amen. In Yeshua's name, the, the Lord heals you now Amen. by the power of his spirit in Yeshua's name. There Amen. is someone you are saying, Lord, is this thing true? I need a sign to confirm. Currently, you are watching us that there is no Nepal light in the house now, but you are watching us. But as a sign to you, may Nepal... Okay, the light just came now. This is, if you are watching, you, you, you see the light just came now. Ah, yeah. And that's a sign that there is something, this thing we are doing, there is something God wants to do with you. But your experiences has affected your belief in this thing. In the name of Jesus, may God help you to fulfill that which God has called you to fulfill. Amen. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Restoration is given to each and every one of you. Amen. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to stop here. It's not a prophetic service, but we have to just bless you. Um, we're going to be live for our Wednesday service, House of Salem, from 5 p.m. So we're going to be live online. We're not holding it on ground this week. We're going to hold it online. Um, so let the admins tell the people. And if you want to join us, you can join us live online from 5 p.m., Today is strictly prophetic, so I'm going to prophesy and praying for each and every one of you as the Holy Ghost carries us. So you God. want to be a part of that also. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much. It's such an awesome um, it's, it's always a beautiful time to spend time with my brother, Apostle Victor. And we're going to be having more and more of my friends. We're going to make this a series where we're going to be inviting our friends in ministry. You will see, you will soon see my friend, Apostle Elijah Olopade. We'll bring Theophilus. We'll bring in all our friends as God helps us. You know, um, acquaintances also will be brought here. We just want to make this an intimate session where we can discuss about certain things, our triumphs, our struggles, how we handle certain issues, so that, number one, it can strengthen your faith. Number two, you understand that you are not the only one going through that situation. Exactly. And exactly. then lastly, it will help us curb the spirit of rumors that have exactly. entered into the body of Christ. Exactly. You know? exactly. So when we begin to speak, there will be no power in rumors anymore. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. God bless you all. Thank you for joining. Um, I see people saying, I just feel a prophetic word. Just say, thank you for joining. Share your testimony in the comment section. Share the broadcast before you go. And also, if you're a media person here, please, um, there's nothing here to even twist, but please fear the Lord. <laughs> Fear the Lord. Don't twist anything here. This is a broadcast held in love. Yeah. You know, in yeah. love exactly. by brethren who desire. Brethren interaction. Exactly. This, this, this is a pure interaction among brethren. If you read anything into it and you cause people to be misled, then you will not go guiltless. We do not cause people in the kingdom, but we can pronounce judgments. Mm. May God help us in Yeshua's name. So, from me, see you later in the evening. And from my brother Apostle, see you some other time. The captain, <laughs> salutations, and see you some other time. God bless you. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you for you coming. So much. I appreciate Thank you. you. So much. Shalom, shalom. God bless you. Bye bye.